The Calexico Bulldogs started the season winning their first four games, but after back-to-back -back losses, the Dogs' schedule didn't get any easier this week with the Central Spartans in town. The Central Spartans, on the other hand, they've won two in a row and trying to make it three. And since rookie Pena took over the program back in 2017, they just haven't lost to Calexico yet. So let's go over to that must-win game at Ward Field with those four and two Calexico Bulldogs hosting league rivals. Central Spartans who came in at 5-2. First drive of the game, Jonathan Real is going to sling it over to on the screen to Emiliano Morales. He's going to break one tackle, make that two tackles, turn on the Jets, and guess what, folks? He could go all the way, all the way in for a touchdown. That's going to be a 7-0 early lead for Central. I love how the big guy got in the way of the Bulldogs. Good blocking. 79, there he is. Team football, baby. <laughs> First drive now for the Bulldogs, and the give is to Noel Gastelum. He's going to follow his blockers, cut it back to the inside, and have a first down inside the 30. Calexico marches right down the field, and it's going to be finished off by Leo Concella, who takes it right up the gut for the touchdown, and we are tied at 7 after the extra point. Following kickoff, though, they're going to send this one deep to Arturo Estrada, and uh, folks, he's gonna bobble this one. Uh-oh, wait, he's gonna pick that thing up, and now he's gonna try and pull a Devin Hester with a lane. He's gonna bounce it to the outside, oh, going down the sideline, and he's gonna take it all the way back. Oh wait, the kicker to Pete. He takes him out too. Touchdown, Arturo Estrada, 13 to seven, Central. Imagine if the kicker would attack him. It's rare. Second quarter now, Central up 20 to six. Roberto Montajano gives it to Marco Esquire on the reverse. He cuts it upfield, but shot of a first down. They have to punt. So now Luis Jimenez is in at quarterback. He rolls out and goes deep for a wide open Robert Rivera. Another big touchdown for Central. That makes it 27 to six after the extra point. The Spartans go on to take this one 21 to 30, or excuse me, they take it 34 to seven in a statement win. Make that win number three in a row. Team they're chasing in IVL is going to be the, yeah, well not the Eagles, but the other team. Got the Brawley Wildcats in town. First IVL game of the year for Brawley. Starting in the first, we're scoreless. Third and five, Brawley with it on the Eagle 48. Matthew Gutierrez firing to Julian Danilov. 19-yard pickup for the cat. Big catch for Big Cat. Very next play, Gutierrez quickly will find his favorite target of the year, Brandon Porras. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There's Porus. A man miss. Storms down the sideline. Whole flock of Eagles after him. He's pushed out at the 11. Wildcats knocking on the door. Knock, knock, knocking on Heaven's door. No, it's going to be a touchdown a couple plays later. They're going to get close. About three yards close. Three yards out. Here we go. Brawley with the give to Zane Richards. Again, wait for it. But some handoffs. He's going to get through. Follow Southwest Drive would go second. Logan Youngers handing to Matai Cervantes, who struggles. He plays later on third and nine. Youngers finds Cole Redding quickly, but Redding loses the football, and it's a while before someone gets their hands on it. Eventually, Abraham Sabalos is able to get a hold of it. 37-yard scoop and score. First points of the game, Wildcats go up 7-0 after the big turnover. Brawley would roll in this one as they bounce back from their loss. First loss of the season last week, they're winning 42 0. Meanwhile, the Eagles fall to 2 and 5. Heading over to a veterans field, the Calapachia Hornets are looking to get above 500, while the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets are trying to snap a three game losing streak. First drive of the game for the Yellow Jackets, wide receiver Gabriel Ramirez is going to take the handoff on first down and runs for a hard nine yards. That's a first. A couple of plays later, it's going to be fourth and eight. The Yellow Jackets quarterback. Gabriel De Leon's going to roll out and throw this one. 18-yard touchdown to Os Osiris Parrish. 6-0. Anyway, the Hornets are able to get in the red zone. Caleb Spence, he's going to take this one himself. That's an 8-yard gain. Now on second down, they're going to give the ball to Dominic Hawk, who's going to burst forward for the first down. And that sets up first and goal. First play of the second quarter, Dominic Hawk gets the carry, and he takes that thing into the end zone. We're tied at Six. Another successful drive for the Yellow Jackets finds themselves in the red zone. This time it's Janwell Fernandez crossing the goal line, takes a hit, and uh, Calipatria go on to lose this game in the second half, 52 to six in favor of Palo Verde. And you better get your popcorn ready. We've got more football this weekend, including Sunday's NFL tilt between 
Dallas and San Francisco. NBC's Football Night in America team previews this weekend's big game. Welcome inside the studio, Maria Taylor alongside Devin McCourty and Jason Garrett. And week five brings us a great game. The Cowboys going on the road to take on the 49ers. And they hope to bring that offense that they had against the Patriots in week four with them, Jason. Yeah, I love how the Cowboys are playing on offense. It's balanced. Dak is making great decisions. It's efficient. And they're not forcing anything because they know their defense is playing awfully well. And this will be the first test of the year for them where they're playing against a San Francisco offense that can score points. Christian McCaffrey on the ground, in the air. So it's going to put some added pressure on Dak and that offense should be a fun game to watch. We can't wait. We'll get you set for a kickoff on Football Night in America beginning at 7 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Thanks, guys. Coming up, we take a look at some girls' flag football. Oh, and some popcorn. How about that? Girls' flag football from yesterday. We also got our helmet props and I'm spitting food. Nonetheless, we'll take a quick water break. See you guys real soon. From the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez. You're watching Friday Night Lights on KYMA. Go Bulldogs! My parents were, are for sure the people who have inspired me the most. I knew that I needed to get my education. I wanted to be like my mom and I wanted to work. Even though my dad didn't go to college, he's super hardworking. He started out working in the fields and he's made a lifelong career out of agriculture. And now he gets to travel and he gets to do a lot. And so that also really instilled hard work in me too because he was like, anything that you do, you're putting your name on it. So you want it to be the best. This weekend is your chance to save big at more furniture. Take a full 21% off your purchase. There's still time to get your home ready for holiday guests and entertaining. And this weekend you'll get an additional 21% off. So create that cozy guest room. Deck out your dining space. And create the living room of your dreams. All at 21% off. Visit morefurniture.com for details. The $250,000 Pro Football Challenge is back at Paradise Casino and Quichon Casino Resort. Make your picks at the kiosk, and you could be one of 10 weekly winners of cash and rewards play. So much, so close. Paradise Casino and Quichon Casino Resort. There's only one local newscast where local sports stars are the real star of the show. FNL's back, baby. Right nights at 10-15. Only on News 11. See which school will take home this week's FNL Play of the Week. Only on News 11. Friday nights at 10-15. We got the news, Mom. <laughs> See, it's all about them. And like they said, it's only Friday nights on Friday Night Lights. Right here on News 11 at 10-15. Sponsored by Southwest Turf and Rock. MPG of Yuma, El Centro has an immediate opening for on-air anchor in Yuma, Arizona. We're looking for an articulate on-air news anchor with good camera presence and a firm grasp of current events. The candidate must have strong news judgment and solid writing and video skills. The ability to lead a newscast and produce a show. The candidate we choose must be able to shoot and edit his or her own material. When applying for this position, please go to KYMA.com. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are my favorite. And welcome back to Friday Night Lights, week eight. Now, it wouldn't be a complete show unless we featured a little flag football. Let's share a little rewind from last night. The Calexico Bulldogs in their high-flying passing game have established themselves as one of the most dangerous offenses in girls' flag football in the CIF. But they met their match last night in a tough road matchup at Imperial. So let's go over to Shimamoto Simpson Stadium, where the 6th and 6th Imperial Tigers hosted the 10 and 2 Calexico Bulldogs. End of the first half, Calexico up 20 to nothing. Giovanna Ortiz is going to connect with Janice Terezked to make it the extra point. That's 21 0. Now over to the second half, Hannah Johnson with a quick toss to Anna Kalara. That gets Imperial on the board 21 7 after the extra point. Next drive for Imperial, Giselle Carrillo is going to find a wide open Alina Carrillo in the back of the end zone. Nate, now we have a seven point game. Following possession, Ortiz is going to hit Paula Nicole Cruz in the flat. She's going to make a move and uh, turn on the Jets, make another player miss, and go all the way for the touchdown. 28-14 Bulldogs. 
but right come back the Tigers. It's going to be a direct snap to Addison Clark. She turns the corner on her way into the end zone. Imperial with a lifeline. Three seconds left. Last chance for Imperial. Carrillo's pass is going to fall incomplete. Calexico is going to take home the 28-20 victory. So let's head over to Eagle Field now with the Southwest Eagles. Looking to end their seven-game losing streak. We meanwhile, they host the, the whole the Lady Vikings in search for win number one. First play of the game, Emilia Mar Emily Marquez is going to throw this one to Leonor Fernandez for a nice gain. A few plays later, Holtville's Mia Navarro. This time, it's going to be an interception. The first turnover of the game. Coming out of the half, Ashley Larios is going to be in the shotgun. She's going to roll out to her right, fire downfield, but she is going to be intercepted herself. Ball right back to the Eagles. Now with the Vikings, Holtville's Emily Britschke is going to come close to a first down, but not enough. It's going to end up as a turnover on downs. With Southwest now in the red zone, they give it on a double lateral to Kayla Navarre, who beats two defenders on her way into the end zone for sixth. The Eagles go on to win this one 14-0. They move to 4-11. You carry it like a loaf of bread. And now, FNL Play of the Week, sponsored by All Play Synthetic Lawns and Landscaping. And for our Play of the Week, I think you guys knew where this one was coming from. It's Central's Arturo Estrada. I mean, turning a disaster into paradise. How about this? He gets a block, makes a cut, and turns Arnie. on the Jets. Ain't no one going to catch him. And how about this? The kicker, did he stand his chance, Scott? No, he did not. Oh, he did. He had a fighter's chance. Yeah, we'll have to take another look at this one, guys. I mean, we could see this on SportsCenter Top 10 after a couple little celebrations. I mean, I get to think what's going through his head there. Maybe uh, flashbacks of... Well, as a kick return, you're trying to get through that first wave. And then after you get that, you get the roar of the yeah. crowd. So, yeah, he did, did a great job. Let's hit our out-of-town scoreboard. Yeah, it was not a fun night for our teams leaving Antelope. Uh, lost to Arizona Lutheran at 70-6. to Dysert. The Demons, yeah, they are all over the Kofa Kings, 77 nothing. Doesn't get any better from there. Yeah, tough day for San Pasqual as well. They lost 88 to nothing to Tonopah Valley. Another tough day for the Yuma Criminals, 42 to six at ALA West Foothills. To our helmet props today, I'm going to go with the uh, the Brawley Wildcats. We wondered how that dual head coaching thing was going to work out. Pretty it's well so far. Very well. They're six and one, right behind Matt Gutierrez, Porus, and the whole gang. Helmet prop goes to the Wildcats, not the Bears, the Wildcats. The Wildcats, very well. You know what, my helmet prop goes out to the Yuma Catholic Shamrocks, a big top 10 for a victory, and the first time they ever played Thunderbird. Uh, we have Nash Ott, another, the passing game keeps rolling against a storied Thunderbird defense, the greats like Cole Zawara. They've been good for a long time. Tate Ford keeps the running game going, and the Shamrocks stay undefeated. Yeah, 115 on the ground and two touchdowns. That's right. Now to today's best. We take the victory formation and send you out a tip of the cap. To you, the viewer, for tuning in, our GM Dave Miller, news director Ernesto Romero, our sponsors, also Luis Lopez, Vanessa Gangora, and Eduardo Morales for helping shoot and edit our games. Updating scores and a big fist pump to our director, Omar Velasquez, pushing all the right buttons and making us look, oh, so good throughout the show. Also, a tip of the cap to our web team members, Faith Rodriguez and Dylan Furman. Enjoy, everybody.